Hey guys, God bless you. Good evening, good evening. I hope you're doing well. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The devil, he's coming against us. He's coming against his uh, enemies. He's coming against God's children. And I pray that you're God's child. I pray that you know that you're going to heaven when you die. I asked a fellow that today. And he assured me that he knows. Oh yeah, 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 I'm going. And uh, he's got the wrong gospel. His mama prayed for him and dedicated him to Jesus. That's a wonderful thing. But every man, if you're going to go to heaven, you must be saved on your own. You must come before the Father as a sinner in need of a Savior. And God will save you, man. That's a wonderful promise. That's what he's promised us that he will do. We've got to let him do that. But Mama's praying for me ain't going to get me saved. It'll lead me to the Savior. Praise God, my mama's praying led me to the Savior. She prayed and she prayed and, boy, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and I'm so thankful he did, guys. He would not let me go. At the age of 17, almost 18. Whew, the Lord saved me. I'm so grateful for that. I pray that you're saved. I pray that you know. I pray that when you lay your head down on your pillow, you know you have such a calm assurance because your trust is in God alone and not yourself. In his word, what he said in his word. I pray you're trusting in his word. His death, burial, and resurrection. He came from heaven to earth and he showed us the way to heaven. He told us the way to heaven. He wants us saved. He wants you saved. He wants you knowing that you're saved. Praise God, man. Do you know that you're saved? If you died right now, are you 100% sure that you are going to heaven when you die? I pray your answer is yes. And it can be. God wants you to know. The Bible says in the book of John, these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life and that this eternal life is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Okay, it's Jesus Christ alone, guys. Nothing else, nothing else. All the religion in the world, all religion is going to burn up and fry. All men's opinions. And guys, for a long time, concerning Bible prophecy and other, other things outside of salvation, salvation is absolutely clear in Scripture. Your salvation is only by faith alone, grace alone, through Jesus Christ, our Lord alone, his death, burial, and resurrection, and your faith. You're placing your life into that story, your story into the story of Jesus. And you intersected, you heard from a preacher, might have been your mama, might have been your neighbor. It may have been a preacher on TV. It may have been a preacher somewhere else on, on the radio. But somehow you heard about the gospel of, the, that means good news, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you heard about his death, burial, and resurrection. And you heard that you must place yourself in the story and believe it for yourself, that Jesus died for me. He took. He's already taken away all the sin. Do you believe that? He's already suffered for it. God the Father has already punished him on your behalf. Do you believe that? Believe it and be saved. Believe it and be saved. And be raised, resurrected in his resurrection power. Amen? God's good like that. He wants everybody saved. We are down to 73 days until the day of Pentecost. Sean has found Bible codes declaring when the year of Jubilee is. And boy, stay tuned for that. I can't wait to see those codes. I can't wait to hear what he has to say about those. Clear as a bell, 100%. What does that mean? That means that was the day he declared, the, uh, you know, when his ministry started. And we're told by Jewish history that the Jubilee is declared on the Day of Atonement. Okay, that's 10 days after Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birthday is the Feast of Trumpets the very first day of the secular or governmental calendar, okay? It's the seventh month on God's calendar. God's calendar begins the first month, which is we're about to begin it right now. And then the 14th day of the first month is Passover. The 15th is unleavened bread. And the 17th is first fruits. And Jesus came and on those very days was his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Then 50 days later was Pentecost. The Holy Spirit planted the church. It's been a 2,000 year process almost, and now we're ready to be harvested, to be raptured on Pentecost. 
And that's what we're waiting for right now. And that's what we're excited about. And that's, that's our countdown. Our countdown is 73 days until then. Make sure your heart's right with the Lord, okay? You, you, you can be saved and, and have your heart wrong with the Lord. You can be saved and rebellious. You can be saved and not be reading your Bible and hearing the voice of God. You can be saved and do all that stuff. But God wants you to know him. God wants you to be near him right now as a friend. That's why he came to this earth. That's why he created us, to have real friends who would choose him by choice over your favorite television program, over your favorite hobby, over everything else that this world has to offer that is only temporary. It stops the day you do. The day your heart stops is the day all this temporary stuff stops. Do you have the wisdom? Do you have the wisdom to say, you know what? I need to go ahead and live and think and do everything eternally with eternity in mind. So the eternal one is God himself. So I must develop a relationship with the Lord. That's what he wants. And now I make a choice. That's what I want. I want to walk with the Lord. I want to know his heart. I want to please him. I want him to be my best friend. He wants me to be. And I'm accepting that offer. I realize that offer's there. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be a nominal Christian. I don't want to be a USA average Christian, which is usually in name only. Most Christians in America are not walking with Jesus. They're not saved. They've never been born again, okay? I mean, when you, when you look at it, when you look at the John Pipers and the John MacArthur's and Alistair Begg, quit watching that guy. He's a fool. Alistair Begg is a fool, okay? He believes in replacement theology. That is a lie. It makes God a liar. Replacement theology makes God a liar. Stay away from every one of these people. Calvinist. What is replacement theology? That God is done with the Jews and the church has replaced the Jew. We're just a parenthesis, guys. You must come to understand that the church is a parenthesis that nobody knew about in scriptures. The prophets didn't know about us. But Jesus came into his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, the church, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Only the church is the sons of God. Only the church is the bride of Christ. Who's the church? The true believers in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Okay, that is what the church, the called out assembly, the ecclesia, that is us. Ecclesia, that is us. Believers, and I, I pray that you're part of that. When I say us, I pray that you are a true, genuine believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he has saved you. The Holy Spirit of God has come inside you and sealed himself in. I pray this is you. And I pray that you've come to understand that only eternity matters and you have flushed everything temporary. You hate the television shows. You hate everything that they propagate and propagandize. You hate it. And you flush it and you walk away from it. You say, I want only heavenly. I want only Jesus. I want only the Bible. I want to only walk in his spirit after, after the spirit, not after my flesh. I hope you've come to realize this. This is maturity. This is where God has wanted you to be all of your Christian life, all of your lost life. He's wanted you to come here to the place of maturity where Jesus is your life, where God is your life. Jesus himself, the scripture tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is life. Anything outside of that is you've been beguiled. You've been deceived. Do not allow the devil to deceive you in any manner, in any way, in any shape, any form. And the only way to know that that's not happening is reading the word of God. God has given us 66 books that we can read. And guys, the faster you read them, the bigger chunks that you read daily, the quicker you get it, the better walk that you'll have, it, it, the clarity that will come is amazing. The joy that comes. You'll find yourself crying and weeping and singing and sitting at the feet of Jesus. You'll be thanking him and it'll be all about Jesus. And, and every thought you have, every breath you take will be an eternal reward existence instead of a temporary caught up, burn up in the flames existence, non-existence. The choice is yours. Even as a Christian, guys, even as a Christian, the choice is yours. Are you going to go to heaven and smell like smoke? Or are you going to go to heaven and have rewards to offer Jesus? Okay. Everything on this planet is vanity. Everything is vanity. I had some friends who took Wednesday off and they went straight over to Memphis and caught the Slipknot show. Not fest. They saw Ginger. 
and they saw the, the Ukrainian ban. It was all waste. They paid big money. It was all garbage. It was purely satanic because Slipknot themselves declares that we are not your kind. They're of the Nephilim variety. They are of the, the pipers piping you to join them. You are the little maggots in their world. Okay, but my friends, Christian friends, took time off of work on Wednesday, went there Tuesday night and jammed. Now they're going to head down Friday night and see him in Little Rock. Wasted, all wasted. All the money they put in their gas tank, all the time they spend talking about it at work uh, to their friends and to people and acquaintances and all this stuff. And we're going to go see the show and we're going to do this and we're going to build it up. And oh, it's so awesome. And it's so every bit of that is wasted. It's gone. None of it was for the Lord. You can't do satanic things for the Lord, guys. You can't do selfish things for the Lord. You can't do worldly things for the Lord. You can't do secular things for the Lord. The only things you do for the Lord are heavenly things, eternal things, things that matter, things you do with a purpose based on God's word, based on the dealings he's had in your heart and his will. He set up in your heart saying, do this, do this, stay away from these things. And I encourage you to be a people who are heavenly minded. I encourage you to be a people who are 24 seven Jesus. I encourage you to be a nut for God. I encourage that you got 73 days left. He may rapture us on this Pentecost guys. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's that close. Do you fear God? Do you fear the Lord? <laughs> I fear the reaper. <laughs> Don't fear the reaper. <laughs> we need more cowbell. And we go straight to ha 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 funny death. It's, it's all burned up. You you go there. You go there, and you went to nowhere. Okay. Keep your mind and your thoughts and your heart, everything out of this world, and begin to focus on the Lord. How much of Genesis do you know? How much can you tell verbatim without ever opening the book? How about Exodus? How about Leviticus? Chapter 23 is the most missed verse or chapter. If people would know Leviticus 23, the, your pastor wouldn't be so stupid. Your pastor's a retard. When was the last time you heard your pastor talk about Nibiru and Nephilim and Gog of Magog and Obama is that? How, when was the last time you heard your pastor say these things? Because these are the things he needs to be talking about now. Because we only have 72 days, possibly 73 days of warning to these people. And they need to hear that message now. They, they're refusing the message of Jesus Christ. So we need to tell them things. And, and it's very unfamiliar. The story of Jesus Christ is unfamiliar to people who will not read their Bible. But if you'll tell people about Nephilim, they're they, they will not be able to keep from seeing Nephilim. It's going to be there. And they'll remember you telling them that those are not outer space men. Th those are demons. Every one of them are demons posing to be outer space men. You see, here's, here's the scenario. They got all this craziness going on right now. And Putin, they call him Putler because everybody refers to him as Hitler. You know, Hitler was a Nazi. That's the United States of America. That's NATO. NATO are the Nazis. You guys know that the United States of America is the new Nazism. All those, all those Nazi scientists and mathematicians came over here and we became Nazi. The, the underground black ops, the underground swamp, that's the Nazis. And the guy yelling swamp, swamp, swamp is a Nazi himself. Trump, they're all Nazis, guys. He, he can scream nationalism all he wants. I heard a guy, a pastor, who has a pretty good following. He's a, he's a uh, Calvary Chapel dude. He was belittling Chuck Misler because he taught some far out things. I like Chuck now because he really presented, he, he had people studying and thirsting for the word, but I thought he was kind of off in a lot of stuff. Now, this very same guy that said that, he believes in nationalism. He believes that America is a godly nation. Do you guys know, if, if you're not too stupid, I want you to track with me right now, okay? That when all religions are okay, our founding fathers said all religions are okay. That's a pagan nation. That is not a Christian nation. A Christian nation would have written law, we're only going to serve Jesus Christ here. And if you don't like that, go to, you know, go to Mexico, serve, serve Rome's Jesus. But we're going to serve Calvary's Jesus here. That would have been a Christian nation if we did that. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson 
hated the Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They hated him. They hated his Bible. They hated his truth. Their whole goal when they wrote up the Constitution and the preamble and all this jazz, the, the laws of our land, was to get Satan seated on the throne. Because they were Luciferian. They're Freemasons. The, the God of Freemasonry is Lucifer. The light. They always talk about the light, the shining light. May the light be with you, you know, and the force and all that other jazz. Okay. Our country is wicked from the inception. We didn't become wicked. We were always wicked. Now, alongside that, in the early days, we had some godly churches, godly pastors, the Puritans. The Puritans who came over here on the boats were not of the Freemasons who came over here on the boats. Two different boats, two different groups, two different people. But the Puritans were a humble, holy people who stuck to themselves and preached the word of God and lived holy and righteously in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Sir Francis Bacon was not of that variety. He was a Rosicrucian, the Rose and the Cross, Freemason, who wanted Satan sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. They have whittled everything down. They have focused everything down. And the red heifer, guys, the red heifer at the Temple Institute is legit. They have one. Uh, the red heifer can't have more than, I think it's like five off-color hairs on it. It must be all red. The nose must be red. The eyelashes red. Everything red on the red heifer so they can kill this red heifer, burn it to a crisp, and take, it, take its ashes and consecrate the temple area with it. Okay? They have finally found a choice red heifer that'll work. And they're talking about it on the Temple Institute, Facebook and the templeinstitute.com, whatever it is. The radio program, everything. They are so ready to consecrate this new temple, and they are in on it. The Kabbalah, the Kabbalistic Jews, are Satanists. They want Satan sitting on that seat. They hate the Lord Jesus Christ. When you know Judaism, they are Satanists. They hate the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They hate his only begotten son, Jesus. They hate Jesus of Nazareth. They are godless. They are satanic. And that Six-pointed star of theirs, that's the star of Rimfan. That is so satanic. So satanic. And everybody who sports that on their altars, if your pastor allows the Jewish star, the Jewish flag up on the platform, your pastor is a retard. Your pastor is a godless individual who doesn't know God. He might be a baby Christian and he might be saved, but he doesn't know God. He doesn't know the book of Amos and he doesn't know the book of Acts where God says, I hate that star. He says, I hate the star of Rimphan and he names it and you carry it across the desert for 40 years. So all you got to do as a simpleton is say, hmm, what's the star of Rimphan and put that in your search bar and it'll bring you to a six pointed star made out of bones. And then pretty lines and straighten it up. You can do whatever you want to with that thing. It's a Freemason star. It's not the star of David. It's the seal of Solomon, who worshiped Satan. Remember, he built three temples and sacrificed his children there. Remember all that? Everything you live in is a lie. And if you would only shut your TV off and do the research, God would be pleased with you. But you haven't studied to show yourself approved unto God unless you studied to show yourself approved unto God. The massive majority hasn't. I pray that you have. I pray that you have. And if you haven't, you got 73 days to do it. Till Pentecost. I believe we're that close. I believe it could very well be 73 days from today. Now, our calendars are all fried, right? It's any Sunday in May and June. And Sunday may be Tuesday. We don't know. It's in the spring before the summer. 50 days after First Fruits, the Sunday after First Fruits. And it's June 5th this year on four different calendars, major calendars, including the Jewish calendar and the Gregorian calendar and the Dead Sea Scroll calendar found at the Dead Sea's uh, caves, Quorum caves. Are you walking with Jesus? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know his heart? Are you ready to see him face to face? The last time, guys, Nibiru, Nibiru is such an important thing to God. He created it on day four of creation. 
Nibiru is a planetary system that orbits Earth. It's God's judgment system. It's a big magnet. It's much larger than Earth. And it, because it's a magnet, it, it col collects space debris in its tail and drags it for millions of miles. It's millions of miles wide because there's seven planets involved here and some moons and other things, comets and everything else is in this system. So it's dragging all this space junk and inside that tail is a big rock called Wormwood. Okay? So this planetary system is huge to God and he always sends it around for his judgment. Okay? It took out the Mayans. It was the three hours of darkness when Jesus was on the cross. Every time God is ready to pour out his judgment, this planetary system is timely. Its orbit is perfected. When he's ready to rain down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, there's this planet. When he's ready to move the earth out of its uh, out of its axis in the days of Hezekiah, he'll bring this planet. The seal of Hezekiah is this planet. Now, this is very important. This is a most important doctrine for you to be teaching people, especially the lost. That's who we're supposed to be after, right? We're going after the lost to see them saved. Do you realize that there's going to be a lot of people who are lost, who will not be raptured, who will be saved because of people like you and me who shared with them the story of Nibiru, who shared with them the story of Nephilim, who shared with them everything they're going to see that we won't see, but they're going to see it. And we're going to explain to them that these judgments all the way to the end, the last judgments, the bold judgments, all originate from the tail of this system coming in. That day of darkness that they're going to experience will be the eclipse of this thing. A whole day of darkness. Nibiru. I had faithful people in my Bible study. And the very last time I mentioned that word, I didn't preach on that word. I didn't say nothing about it. I, I just mentioned the word. I said, and the lost people around us need to hear the Nibiru system. And I saw chuckling taking place, laughing, laughter. And then those people didn't come back after that. Do not let the devil get a hold of your heart right now. Do not let the devil take a hold of your mind right now. This is the worst time in all of history to let the devil reign in your mind because you will not read the Bible and you will not listen to his preachers. And I am telling you, God gave us this Bible code affirming everything that I'm telling you. And he calls it his judgment system. And he's going to be raining down the fire and it comes from him, God. After the four horses ride, the pestilence and everything causing that is going to be coming from Nibiru. These red sunsets that you see every morning and every night all around the world, these more than brilliant red, are God's warning signs to you that this red system is above you. The red dragon of revelation, that's what Nibiru is. It's above you. God is warning you now. He's saying, man, will you please wake up? Will you please listen? And you need to be telling, you need to shut your March Madness off. And you need to be telling people that that red sunset there is not a glorious thing. That is a sign that God is going to judge us real soon. He's trying to warn us. Will you listen? Those with eyes to see, will you see? Those with ears to hear, will you hear? Will you hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? The church is not hearing. The massive majority of the church on the globe right now is Laodicea. And it started in the United States of America. Remember us warning you about Hillsong for the last 10 years? Well, the leader of Hillsong just had to quit his church because he's been messing around with too many women. Hello? You guys know that the two choices, when God said it's me or mammon, mammon involves a lot of sex. They're a sexual cult. Homosexual, heterosexual, whatever, just sinful sex. Non-coveted sex. Sex outside of a covenant with God. Sex outside of marriage, one husband, one wife, one male, one female. That's what they work in, and that's what all these churches are about. Hillsong, Elevation. Guys, if you can't tell that Stephen Furtick doesn't know God, doesn't know Jesus, you don't know Jesus. You don't know God. You have followed along with them and their false gods. You have followed along with mammon. You have followed along with death and the sex cult. If you don't understand that, 
if you don't know that Calvinists are wicked and oppose God, your faith, you need to question yourself. You need to say, God, am I really saved or what? Where's my discerning spirit in this? He'll say, you watch too much TV, bro. You need to shut that thing off and start studying. You need to start studying whom I love and who is against me. How do we know that the Calvinists are against God? Because they add works on the end, on the backside of salvation. Not up front. They'll say, you got to believe the Lord Jesus Christ be saved. But if you're truly saved, there will be evidence and you'll be doing works. They believe in replacement theology. God hates replacement theology with a passion. It calls him a liar. God said he's going to do dealings with Israel for eternity. That's Israel of the flesh. That's the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, I will be having dealings with you for eternity. And all these Calvin folks come along and say, no, it's not for eternity. You know, Luther hated Jews. It wasn't just the Calvinists. It was the Lutherans too. It was a, all of those people who came out of the Catholic Church and named themselves Protestants. You see, there was a group who was never part of the Catholic Church, and they were always people of the word. There were several groups like that. The Baptists were one. But they were never part of the Catholic Church. So when all these groups, the Presbyterians and the Methodists and the Lutherans, and when they all came out, of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church didn't come out of them. And they always referred to Augustine, and they just loved him, and that guy was a pagan from hell. And they brought all this into Christianity, and that is when the great falling away began. The great falling away began 500 years ago. So the people don't know there's a great falling away, and they're still looking for this great falling away. What is the great falling away? The great falling away is when a person mentions Jesus Christ and they're going to hell. And they claim that they love Jesus Christ and they call themselves a Christian and they're going to hell. That is the great falling away because they will not believe the doctrines of truth. They will not believe God himself. They don't fear God and they don't fear hell. Do you know God? Is hell constantly on your mind? When you look at people at Walmart, does it break your heart because you know their default is hell until they're going to heaven? And the massive majority of the people, instead of making fun and taking pictures and look what I saw caught at Walmart, shouldn't it be breaking your heart that they're going to hell, that Jesus died for them? He suffered intensely, guys. Guys, Mel Gibson never showed what happened in the three hours of darkness while Jesus died. Mel Gibson just showed Jesus taking a beating. Oh, and, and that was bad. He, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. But there was an internal whipping and lashing and punishment that took place that God himself poured out. It was the wrath that God poured out on Jesus, not the Roman soldiers that saved us. Mel Gibson totally missed that part of it. And so do most Christians. Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world by the Father. And the Father, in those three hours of darkness, put it on him. David Wilkerson believed you could lose your salvation. That's a bad thing. David Wilkerson was a Pentecostal. David Wilkerson was religious. And the guy that's taken over, over after him, Carter Conlon, same way. They believe you can lose your salvation. They don't understand the doctrine of imputation, where God imputes his righteousness into a person. They think, I can believe I can't believe. I can believe I can't believe. I can believe I can. They don't understand imputation of righteousness, where God imparts, infuses, imputes his righteousness into one who believes that only Jesus can save me. And these guys go into it thinking, now you've got to remain safe, a work. You've got to stay faithful. You've got to repent. You've got to stay repented. You've got to stay repented if you're going to go to heaven. That's a lie. 
we stay repented to have fellowship with the Lord, not to be his children. There's children, parents have can have five children and one be a non-repented, reprobate, foolish kid or four of them, either, either way. But it doesn't stop them from being a kid because it's a blood situation. DNA. When the Lord saves us, when he infuses his righteousness into us, it's a blood situation. It's his blood. It's a DNA thing. We become new creations, and these guys don't believe that. And so what we have is people who are passionate about the word of God. They love God's word. Now, this is also includes, uh, you'll never hear better preaching than Calvinist. You'll never hear better preaching than Spurgeon. And that guy is burning in hell right now. You'll never hear. He was the prince of preachers. He preached five sermons every day of the week. And he was known for his fervency. And he's burning in hell because his gospel was wrong, guys. He believed in Calvinism. He believed you had to maintain your salvation and prove it. So he was fervently proving it five times a day, how much he loved God and how saved he was. And he's burning in hell right now. And we don't, just conjecture this. We have Bible codes to point to this. To many of folk who are in hell and who are going to hell and who are accursed. These guys preached a great truth and they had visions and they had dreams. So did all the false prophets in the Bible. And they sounded, I mean, Hananiah sounded just like Jeremiah. He preached the same sermon, except his years were off. Jeremiah said they were going to serve 70 years in Babylon. And Hananiah said, no, it's just two years. He didn't say they weren't going to go to Babylon. He didn't say they weren't going to be taken captive. He preached the same sermon. He just kind of changed the numbers a little bit. And he was a false prophet. And I'm telling you, man, you better get with your favorite prophecy teacher. And you better tell him to get his heart in line with the Bible code. And if he opposes the Bible code, Sean Mitchell's Bible code, he's dead wrong. And there was a time when we could be a little wrong. We didn't know that the, the verse could have said it like this or that. The way, the way it's written, it could be either way. And there could be two sides. And that's not going to be a fellowship breaker. But once the word of God comes, it's a fellowship breaker. If you refuse to go with God on this, it's a fellowship breaker. Paul told us that. If there's Christians in your midst who refuse to walk with the Lord, who refuse to be obedient, who refuse to, to know God's scriptures and to, to be in compliance with those scriptures, have nothing to do with those people. Mark them and avoid them. That includes Gog being at the end. Remember what I'm telling you about all these doctrines that the pastors aren't preaching about now because we're about to go to heaven and then all these people are going to be facing this and when they face these things i want them to know that there are no such thing as aliens they're demons in disguised as aliens and their actual name is nephilim they are demon seed they are demons with bodies there's a lot of those in human form right now talking heads on television those aren't humans and people believe them. This guy I was saying, uh, talking about a second ago, uh, I like Chuck Missler for the fact that he really encourages people to get in the Bible, but I don't believe a lot of that crazy stuff he taught. And this guy believes that this war with Putin and Ukraine is authentic. He thinks it's real and non-scripted. And he thinks there's a chance America can be revived if we'll just pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Then God will hear from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land. When the Bible code says that God's mad at us, angry with us, going to destroy us first. Now, who are you going to go with? And these guys have thousands of hits. All oh, guys, I'm telling you, all these Calvary chapels, they're networked. And they just love each other. And they just keep preaching this stuff. And every word that comes out of their mouth is wasted. And many of them think you can lose your salvation. They're lost. They study the Bible so well. They know the scriptures. They know what the word says. They know what it kind of means for the most part, but they don't know Jesus. And what did Jesus say? Depart from me, I didn't know you. He, he never says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You never memorize scripture. He didn't say that. He said, while you were memorizing scripture, you never got to know me. 
It wasn't real with you. And what do these people do? They defend themselves with the works that they did. But Lord, we, we did awesome stuff for you. We, we, we really believe we were saved. Mm. I got so many Pentecostal friends who are my friends on Facebook who are going straight to hell. And all they do is post Jesus stuff. All you oneness people, unless you believe in the Trinity, you belong to a satanic cult. Those Jesus only folks. If you're a Jesus only folks and you believe in repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, you are going to hell. You are dead in your sins until this very moment. There is a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There are three who bear record in heaven, says John, 1 John. There's three who bear record in heaven, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. says that. No, what that really means is something else. And people take the truth of who God is. They take his doctrines and they spin it to match their doctrines, their favorite preacher, their own heart, their own wicked hearts. I was talking to a guy today. He said, I sat there in the Church of Christ for 20 years. And I got sick of them telling me I'm going to hell every week because I I did this little sin, that little sin, and I wasn't baptized in their church. And they preach every week that if you don't belong to our church, you're going to hell. And do you know that every one of those people, if they believe the doctrine of the church of Christ, they're all going to hell? Because there are no steps in salvation. There's only belief in salvation. There's falling down in salvation. No steps. You fall and believe. You humble and believe. Not steps. Falling. Let's go through that again. No steps in salvation. There's humbling and believing in salvation. That's it. And there's so many people who preach the word, who got verses memorized, and they're going straight to hell because they have their salvation wrong. And the last time in my Bible study, I mentioned the word Nibiru, which is God's judgment system. It's part of the horses riding. It's the six seal earthquake. The reason the earthquake is triggered is because this big magnet pushes against us and there's electromagnetic magnetic discharge between the two. And it's going to take place right here across my living room on the New Madrid fault line. That's just the sixth seal. Then the seventh seal is going to be the same. The first four trumpet judgments are from this planetary system. Then the planetary system go, goes so far out in its orbit that it, we kind of lose it for a little while till the end of seven years. And then it comes back and produces all that destruction in the bold judgments in Israel. The first destruction takes place in North, Central, and South America when it makes its orbit. Then it comes back and the world thinks they're fine and the world's great. And it's just like it was in the days of Noah. And Israel has become a land without walls and things are great. And at the mid-trib, uh, one third of the Jews go running. And they're like, uh, no, Obama is the Antichrist. We want nothing to do with him. And they go into hiding. Right after that, he implements the uh, mark of the beast, buy, sell, trade. And he is slaughtering people. He's been slaughtering people this whole time. And he's killing folks off, bloodshed, bloodshed. This guy is bloodthirsty. And then when Satan enters him, he really gets bloodthirsty. Hasatan gets in him. And then they're doing their destruction and people who get the chip, we're with you. And they're having a ball. They're having a party, man. They are metaversing it, man. They are just having the time of their life. They are doing drugs and, and having a blast and party. And, and then all of a sudden, when they don't expect it, when they least expect it, Obama, Gog, and all the nations of the world come down and they think, you know what? It's about time we just kill off Israel and take their stuff. And God is the one who put the hook in their jaw. He's the one who tempted them to do this. He put it in their hearts. Hey, why don't you go on down to Israel and take all their stuff? And then Obama loves the idea and the false prophet loved the idea. Satan loves the idea. And they conjure up through their wizardry, guys, the Christian church. You parents have taught your children to like wizards. Harry Potter, you have taught your children devil worship. And you just think it's cute. You think we're nuts. You think guys like me are just fools and crazy and wackos. You'll see. You'll see shortly. Very shortly. I believe 73 days. It's going to be on the feast of 
of uh, Pentecost. That's coming up real soon. And so Obama con conjures up these devils, the devil, uh, the false prophet. They conjure up the entire devils of the entire world to work it in the hearts of all the armies, all the militaries in the world to come gather at the Valley of Megiddo. And then all of a sudden in comes Nibiru, the tail of this thing, destroying with bold judgments, fire and brimstone and hailstones and zapping out everybody's lithium in, in, in their batteries. And they're getting boils on their bodies because of this planetary system. And people are elbowing each other, laughing at me when I mention it. Fools. Fools, fools, fools. You better know the story that I'm telling. You better know the proper names because that's what they'll be calling it during that time. God names it in his Bible code. And you warn these people, if you will not believe Jesus on this side and be raptured, here's what you're going to face. And when you see these aliens, they're not aliens. And when you hear the story that they, the invasion of the body snatchers, and it was the aliens who abducted all of us, it wasn't the aliens who abducted us. It was the rapture. The Lord Jesus Christ took us out of here. And you tell them what's coming and they'll be saved and they'll give up their lives and they'll love not their lives unto the death because you were a faithful witness. You knew the truth because you knew the Bible code and you preached the Bible code to them. And you left this cotton candy crap that's being preached in church. You left that alone. You knew that was no man's land. That doesn't matter now what they're preaching. Seven steps to a healthier, better you. Jesus is about to destroy this place. There is no healthier, better you here in America. Know that. Understand that. I had a guy tell me, yeah, yeah, I get it. God's going to destroy America. Why don't we talk about something else? Uh, I guess I'm not talking to you, pal. You should be telling everybody what I'm saying. You should be telling them that God's going to destroy them. Ain't that where you live, America? North America, Central America, South America. Most of us listening to this right now live there. It's going to start here. And then, then if you don't live here, it's going to come to where you are next. And tell these people that. You're going to see America taken out. And we'll probably lose communication with them while your party's going on there in Europe. Now, we won't know nothing about America. They will have gone dark. And they're going to, you're going to have so much excitement going on that you won't care about the Americans being tortured here starving to death, going through. What's going to happen, guys? What is happening in Afghanistan right now? You need to know what's happening in Afghanistan with the Christians at the hand of the Taliban. That's going to be happening in the three continents that I mentioned to you, to all true believers. They're going to be tortured. It's going to be terrible. They're going to be raped and ravished. And the communications are going to be shut off around the world. And the rest of the world will be partying just like America is. And they don't care about Afghanistan. God is going to give you, America, a taste, a dose of your own medicine. You don't care about the tortured Christians around the world? God's going to make it to where they don't care about tortured Americans around the world. That's very soon. I pray that you'll be saved today. I pray that you'll humble yourself and you'll give yourself wholly and fully to God. Okay? Let's do that. Hey, why don't we look at a couple of Bible codes here? Let's look at a couple of Bible codes. Which ones? I got a bunch pulled up. Let's look at life after death. Life after death. It's going to be for the judgment. And the question is asked right here by God. Where will, where will you go? Where will you go? Jehovah has searched me and he knows me. That is Psalm 139 in verse 1. Life is a vapor. Life is very short. Everything here that happens on this planet is temporary. It's a vapor. It's gone. Life after death, where are you going? Let's look at the next one. Hell. No one will tread with shouts of joy. The shouting that you'll hear in hell is not shouts of joy. Their appearance was like coals of fire, burning like the appearance of torches. That's Ezekiel. Ezekiel 19, and they spread their net over them. He was taken in their pit. Satan has been setting the trap for so long. Many Christians are in that trap right now. I'm going to encourage you to humble yourself before God. Quit hating the Bible code. Quit hating God's word. You, If you hate the Bible code, you hate God's word. And therefore, you hate Jesus. Jesus is the word. You hate God. They are dwellers of earth. And now they're dwellers of hell. Hell is real. Fear God. They're going there because they were accursed because of their sin. Jesus Christ tells us that he's going to revoke the payment. 
He paid for every sin for everybody who has ever lived on earth. But the moment that person dies without becoming saved, without allowing Jesus or believing that Jesus paid for their debt, their debt is revoked. He, their payment is revoked and God removes the payment for their sin and they go to straight to hell. The Bible code teaches that. The Bible code is real. You better come to love and value the Bible code and quit potty mouthing it. Quit cursing it. You're cursing yourself. Next. Hell is everlasting. Let's see. Hell is everlasting. We, uh, they will be very surprised at the amount of pain and torture that's there. People who laugh about hell, all my friends are going to be there too. They're going to be incredibly shocked at the pain and torment that God is going to give them. It's going to be God doing it. Psalm 31, 9 and 10, for I am in trouble. Oh, my eye is consumed with grief. These are people crying from hell. Oh, my soul and my belly for my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed forever and ever and ever and ever. You'll never get out of hell. Once, once Jesus Christ revokes the payment, the payment of your sin, he paid for it all, paid in full, but you wouldn't believe. If you do believe, you get to go to heaven, guys. You get to escape all these things that we were destined for. We deserved hell. We were going to hell, but Jesus stepped in, in the way and paid our debt, paid our ransom, bought the slaves off at the slave block and set us free. Now, I'm free to serve the devil after he saved me. I can serve the devil after he saved me, or I can serve him after he saved me. What kind of human being are you? You a wise man or are you a fool? They that be wise shall shine as the stars of heaven, and they that turn many to righteousness. That's what wise men are doing is telling people about Jesus. They're telling people who won't believe in Jesus right now about the futures of the seven-year tribulation so they can recollect and so they can see and they can remember what you said, and you'll be a witness long after you're in heaven. Oh, from above is terror. God is bringing the judgment. God is bringing it on them. Outside of the light, and the payment was revoked. Right here is where it says that. This Bible code is called Hell is Everlasting. You know what the skip is? 66. The worthlessness will begin. You are, when God paid for you, you were worth it to him. But the day you die without him, the payment will be revoked and you will be counted worthless to him. And it will begin, and your breath will be bitterness. You will never be able to get a good breath ever again. You'll be choking on the sulfur. You'll be choking on the gases. You'll be, oh, he's trying to scare me. Uh, I'm just telling you what the Bible code says. I don't know what you're going to do with that. I want you to be saved, and I don't want you going here. This is where you're going unless you become born again. This is where you're going unless you humble yourself before Jesus and believe. His side of the story, the Bible. Will you believe and will you do it his way? Will you have followed him in your dispensations all along the way? My buddy in the Church of Christ, he says, all these people, are they just preaching, wailing, blah, 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 blah. And I said, they're all going straight to hell, buddy. They're all going to hell because they want to work their way. They don't understand the payment that was paid, that Jesus pays for us. It's paid in full and we must believe that. Nothing else. Do you believe that Jesus paid? it all for you. Trust and obey today. Believe him and be saved. Psalm 33, 8, let all the earth fear the Lord. Please fear him. That means have total, awesome, humble reverence for him. Do you have that? I pray you do. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, and it is set. He'll have them forever and ever and ever. This Bible code says hell is everlasting. It'll be everlasting torment, everlasting misery, everlasting not being able to breathe, only because you hated the love of Jesus. You hated what he did for you. You hated goodness. And now you'll suffer for it.
because you are a fool. You are a retard. Psalm 31, 17, O Lord, let me not be ashamed for I have called upon you and let the wicked be ashamed. Let them be put to silence in the netherworld. Send them to hell, Lord. But please, God, I come to you. I don't want to be this person. I trust in you. I believe in you. I believe that you have paid it in full. And he has. Hell is set on fire. Who did all this? Jesus. He did not create hell for humans. Jesus created hell for his enemy, the devil. But the devil set a net. He set a trap. And a bunch of people have followed him. He's the Pied Piper. And the biggest way he is piping the music is Christian worship music. It all sounds the same. I listened to a fellow from Guatemala and a fellow from Mexico listen to their praise worship in their language. And it sounds just like the nightclub that we hear at our churches in the English language. It's all the same thing. And Satan is piping them straight to hell. What does the next one say? Uh, that's a that's one about the Lord striking them. Okay, fear. That is hell is a fire. Will you fear that hell is a fire? Christians, believers, will you fear that hell is a fire? Will you see everybody around you for the next 73 days going to hell? And will you begin to cry and weep and howl for the miseries that shall come upon them? Because they won't believe on this side. Your family, your friends, your neighbors, people, strangers you don't even know. Will you get a burden for these people and pray, Lord God, please, please send forth laborers into their harvest. Please get them saved on this side. Please, Lord God. They're all going to be destroyed. And how do we know all this stuff that I'm telling you? It's in the plain text, and it was also found by searching a code. That's what this says. Thus, searching a code in the word, and in the word we find fear and awe. And when you go to hell, it says this right here, you will go hated. God hates everybody in hell. Oh, God's love. Over there at Calvary, you'll find that. He that has the Son has life. But he that has not the Son of God has the wrath of God, the hatred of God abiding on him. You better warn people of that. He's going to hate you eternally unless you get to the cross. That's where his love is found. Will you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection? It's forever. You will be put to shame. You will live in eternal shame. You will hate yourself. You will be alone. You will be in darkness. You will be gasping for air and water. We have that in Luke 16. We know that's a true story. And you will not be able to find any kind of solace forever and ever. And the thing is, you'll be stuck with yourself. You'll be stuck with your memories. You'll be stuck with your foolishnesses. You'll be stuck with everything else that we, the believer, will be freed from in our glorified body. We won't remember any negative things in our past. Satan will never accuse us again. And they're going to spend eternities in hell being accused by the devil and knowing it's true. These are not false accusations at this point. You and I, the believer, are accused of false accusations. By Satan and his people, his minions, will throw false accusations your way. But in hell, they're not false. They're true accusations. You're never getting out. I encourage you to please fear God. We search the plain text. We search the Bible codes for this, and we find it. Hell is real. Hell is everlasting. And fear that hell is a fire. Fear it. Feel it. Understand it. It's so true. God loves you today. Please be saved. How about this, though? The rapture. By me, God says, you will be removed. We shall not all sleep. That is the, that is the main axis term. By me, you will be removed. We shall not all sleep. We're going to be raptured. Daniel 7, 27 shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Jesus forever and ever and ever and ever. Oh, there's going to be many souls that are changed, many souls that are raptured. Oh, what's it going to all happen? Here is the end. Here is the end of all things. When is the end of all things? When the rapture happens and the countdown begins. 
That includes the day of the Lord, includes the whole thousand year millennium. And they all saw Jesus. When do they all see Jesus? You and I, all the believers, see him in the air, both the dead and the living. But when Jesus comes back, the whole world will see him. Every eye will see him. For you is reward. For you is reward. You that have believed, you that are saved, you that have been purchased with a price, you that understand that Jesus is the one who paid it all and you have nothing to do with this but to believe it. For you is great reward. The word reveals this. That's what it says. For you is reward. The word reveals. Jesus comes back and does all of this for us. Jesus initiated it. Jesus continues it and he completes it. He who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete that work in you until the day of Jesus Christ and thereafter in the glorified you. Are you saved today? Do you believe God's word? Are you living heavenly and eternally? Or are you living temporarily day, day to day and it's all a waste? It's all going to burn up smoke in the fire of judgment. I encourage you to live these next 73 three days full-blown for Jesus. It very well may be at the end of these 73 days is when he's going to rapture us. I pray it's this feast of Pentecost. I pray for you. I pray that you are a witness. I pray that you uptick your witness for the Lord, your prayer, your eternity. Quit living temporarily. Pray, God, what will you have me do in these next 73 days and do it. Start sharing stuff on your Facebook. Start sharing things in whatever platforms you have. Share the word of God. Share the story. Share the stuff that nobody's sharing. Get into these Bible codes and learn about Nibiru. Get into these Bible codes and learn about Nephilim. Get into these Bible codes and learn about Gog of Magog, that Obama is the Antichrist. Learn these things. Know these things. Understand these things and tell people to be looking for these things. If they're not going to be looking for Jesus, tell them to be looking for this stuff. Because it's coming and not to follow it and not to get that mark of the beast and not to love their lives unto the death. We know that that's going to happen. You can have a big part in that happening. Many people in the tribulation will believe. They will die. And at the fifth seal, they'll be under the altar saying, Lord God, please avenge us. And God's going to say, not just yet, a whole bunch more of you got to get saved and die first. A lot of your brethren have to die first. And there's going to be people believing, believing, believing because of your witness and the witness of the 144,000 and Moses and Elijah there. Be a part of that witness. Be a part of that witness now. Tell everybody, be a fool, be stupid, be, be laughed at, be jeered at, be made fun of, be mocked. Great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you, and your reward will be awesome. Tell everybody. Get the word out there, guys, because hell is real. And everybody you know is going there. Until they're not. Until the preacher comes along and shares the gospel with them and they believe that good news of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection, he paid it in full. And if they'll believe, their payment will never be revoked. If they refuse, their payment will be revoked the day they die. And God will hate them forever in hell. They're going to hate themselves forever in hell. And those demons that come along, remember that beating that Jesus took on the cross? The demons are going to beat them forever and ever and ever. Whip and post, beat them up, beat them down. They'll never be able to recover and they'll never find rest. When you and I, the day we are raptured, it's going to be constant rest, constant peace, a joy that we have never known or can explain. And it will never go up and down. There'll never be any kind of bipolar. It'll be always up here on the high level, the high plane of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to find that fruit of the Spirit everywhere. Closing here, going to church Sunday, right, right up over this hill, over the bypass, and I see all around me in Jonesboro, the pear trees are blooming. The pear trees are just gorgeous. They're awesome, white. And the problem with these pear trees is there's no pears. There'll never be pears on them. They're Bradford pear trees. They're Ornamental flowering trees. Ornamental flowering trees are no good in a famine. Jesus is looking for trees that aren't purdy. He's looking for trees who will bear fruit. Will you please abide in him and allow him to bear wonderful fruit, more fruit, much fruit, exceeding fruit, through you and your obedience for the next 73 days? 
Let's just do it for him. Don't be a flowering pretty tree that is worthless in famine. Because the seven-year tribulation is a famine. And these people are going to need to hear a word that will help them until they are decapitated, until they are stoned, until they are slaughtered, or until Jesus comes back to save them. Your message now. Bear fruit now. Even though it may not look like fruit, just get the word out there. Get that hard truth out there to people who aren't going to be saved. And maybe some will be because of your hard truth. Because they'll finally get it. They'll finally see it. Speak of Kim Trails. Your pastor ain't. Speak of harp. I heard a guy speaking this week. Watched a video. My buddy shared a video with me. They detect minerals, gold, silver, oil underground using a system that uses 30 watts. 30 watts. It finds this stuff. Harp uses 1 billion watts. And they create earthquakes. And all this stuff you're seeing right now is man-made. That's why Satan and Obama and the entire world thinks they're the bomb because they're doing all this stuff. They're the ones hitting the button and you think the tornado was just a freak, freaky thing that happened. You, you think that the storm was just so crazy and it's them doing it. Guys, I heard their thunder machine malfunctioned outside my window two nights ago. It went from being a thunder to this crazy sound till it got fixed, till it looped itself around and found itself. The Lord let me hear that. I told my wife, I says, that machine just messed up. The thunder is fake. Remember, Baal is the God of thunder. He's the God of weather. And they think they have the power because of harp. You might want to learn that. Your pastor doesn't know anything about it. And tell people, there are truthers who hate God, who believe what I'm telling you because it's existing. They've researched. And they create weather. They create earthquakes. They create tsunamis. They will threaten Japan. The United States threatened Japan and said, you better heed what we say. You better not mess with our monies. You better do this or we're going to send a tsunami your way. Remember Fukushima? That was them not obeying. And that was us taking them to the whipping post. Oh, we'll kill a couple hundred thousand. It don't matter to us. You better do what we say. And you can teach people this right now and they'll believe when they get into the tribulation and you'll see fruit bearing. You won't just be a flowering, pretty little tree. That's the ones who ain't saying a word. Those who ain't saying a word, they looking cute and they looking churchy and they looking good, but there's no fruit there. And God's looking for fruit. What did he say when he sees a tree that doesn't bear fruit? He's going to hew it down and throw it into the fire. That means it's worthless. He's looking for fruit. Guys, I love you. We can keep going. Hell is real. Hell is everlasting. See it before you and get speaking about topics that your pastor ain't. Speak truth. Speak seven-year tribulation words to these people so they'll believe long after you're gone and you'll be producing fruit for the Lord Jesus Christ in the kingdom. I love you, man. God bless. We'll see you Sunday.